Years ago, I had had this idea to do a motocross-like event on snowboards. So we staged the first ever border cross race. It had speed, people riding head to head, it had berms, and it, it had jumps. We thought we would do SSX, and then we'd move on to creating a new sport experience uh, in a similar vein. It's just out of a passion of, of how to make things more interesting to create something more fun. You're working from a base sport. The first game was really about really, really dedicated people who, who had an idea, had a vision. You tend to kind of design something that is way beyond the scope of, of what you can actually pull off in the first versions. Now we get to, to take the fruits of our labor and say, okay, we got the core experience down, now let's, let's build the worlds we really wanted to build. We want to be you know, so far away from you know, simulation snowboarding and out here somewhere. We're throwing stuff in there, which is just, woo, you know. <laughs> it's like, where'd that trick come from? There's, you know, a lot of technology the team has to create. There's a lot of innovation. But we don't to keep on People are noticing the efforts that you're putting in now. So give yourselves a hand. Uh, this was our milestone review meeting. Uh, we do this about once every four to five weeks. Get together as a team. The team is large enough that sometimes you don't get enough uh, cross exposure of what other groups are doing and stuff like that. So it's a really good opportunity for a lot of people to turn around and uh, uh, see what some of the other groups are uh, getting into. On the surface, if we succeed, it looks simple. But in truth, you know, we have to first create the world, um, which is an incredible opportunity but it also sometimes becomes a, a, a daunting responsibility. My normal tendency is to leave things as they are if they're working. However, it's the tendency of uh, producers to want to keep pushing and pushing the technology. It took somebody looking at it in a particular way, coming up with a unique solution to actually make it work. You're trying to describe the camera pass through the, through the world. You end up doing a lot of, you're going through an ice tunnel kind of a thing, and you know, it's a, it started off as kind of an interpretive dance as you're trying to describe it all. We have uh, almost 15 software engineers working on the, this project. When video games first started, you can you could you can make a game in a few few months. Now, now it takes you know uh, you know around 18 months, two years to make a game. So, if we just did what we did last time, it would look very old school. It's been a while since they've let me come out to play. <laughs> we really vamped up the characters, uh, the tricks that they can do, personalized tricks, uh, the Uber tricks. Uh, the voices, name talent for the voices. You know, we can totally hang out. Love you, man. Enough talk. Let's rock. Yeah, buddy. Oh, look at them shoes. Vamos de fiesta juntos. Don't look at me like that. Oliver Platt playing Luther. I am a man's man. Luther was meant to be this over-the-top character. One of the other things we're doing is our front end is all going into a 3D world. The reason behind that is we want to do something that really sort of um, gives the user a sense of what the gameplay is going to be like before they get in, a sense that SSX Tricky is different than all the other games out there. And I've been doing this since like 95 and it's probably the biggest leap that we tried to make with the front end for sure. If we do it right and, and, and people get immersed and believe in the experience, you forget you're playing a video game. You know, not only were you all of a sudden up there and you know, you, you got a hole in your stomach because you're 80 feet off the ground, but your character is going, yeah, woo, and it's like, you know, you kind of almost want to high five your character. In this kind of game, we're not telling a story. We're creating an experience. 